Hello, everybody, and welcome to the shoot around. I am the only host of this podcast, Rudy St. Clair, and joining me, as is tradition, beside me is the one and only Jacob R.R. Buckets. Below me is the legendary Alex Coops. And then we got the latest and greatest host of this podcast, Nick, aka Motown Noah. Fellas, we don't get today. Vibes are up. Yeah, vibes are very high right now, even though it's uh, stormy outside, I think, for all of us big uh, storm going across the nation but that's enough about the weather we don't do that on this show we do got some rapid fire news coming up but first apologies to all of our audio listeners because i neglected to upload last episode episode 31 of season four <laughs> we have <laughs> audio listeners we got a few hundred audio listeners and if you're oh, wow. watching this right now which is a much larger audience be sure to subscribe to us on apple Podcasts, spotify wherever you get your shows all that stuff uh you can get it right to your phone, just like Jacob's on right now. You know? <laughs> uh, so without any further ado, one more apology. Nick's name, not in the logo yet, but I'll just apologize for it next show didn't if it's not say, done by then. Did you say you'd get it for this one? <laughs> I did, and that's why I'm apologizing. Uh, but first, we got about 10 new stories that I'd like to try to get through in about 10 minutes, but more often than not, it takes a little bit longer than that. First things first is we got uh, James Harden being the fourth NBA player to record 25,000 points. Uh, what's the other numbers? <laughs> 6,000 rebounds and 7,000 assists. Uh, fellas, I'm, I'm amazed that he hasn't done this before, right? Like, why is this happening this season? How does this not happen in one of those MVP caliber years? Especially when he was playing all 82. I, I have a sarcastic answer, but... <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Well, I'll you just, can't set us up and then say you're not going to say it. The fuck? Say it. Well, Rudy was like, I can't believe this hasn't happened before. And I was like, yeah, I think it like, can only happen once. He yeah, didn't you, do it in a way, single season. The way you said it made it sound like he did all of this this season. Yeah. I was like, like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, 5,000 <laughs> points in a season? Here's my thing. No, so, Rudy, is, what you meant to say was that how did this not happen sooner? Is that what you were going for? That is what I mean, you know. But I guess my I, I do like the be, thing. I like the suggestion that I was suggesting I don't, uh, I don't, doing I it all in one season. How long he's been in the league? That's a total reasonable <laughs> amount of totals. Like, well, he's I guess getting close. Russell Westbrook's ahead of him in this regard. He had already done it, uh, and their career trajectories have been pretty similar. Stats I don't wise. think so. I think Russ got a, a head start on that front. Like he's he been was in the league up, longer. Too. He was putting up bigger numbers faster. Yeah, he's like also got like two two seasons on Harden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One or yeah. two. I guess it's maybe all it I'm takes. just maybe I'm just dumb. I don't. I am hoping somebody out there hears this and is like, I agree with this guy, but I don't. How did it not happen sooner? I have no idea how to quantify 25,000 points, 6,000 rebounds, and 7,000 assists. Like, does the average, well, how many points does Luca score in a season? Is it 3,000? I don't, like, how many? Is I it? mean, I know the like record. 12, is, like the around record, 1,200, I think. 1,200. I mean, yeah, the so record I'm, is. I'm good at thinking about small numbers. I, the record's from Wilt, and I think it's like 4,200 points. That's the most that anyone's ever scored in one season. That's obviously the 50 point per game season. <laughs> Leo in the chat doing exactly what Nick requested. Yeah, saying, can we I agree with this, this guy. to where it's like we're reacting on the side? Oh, I'm is, completely uh, wrong. It's like 2000. Yeah, that's like high scoring players. Yeah. Well, I guess that's enough about that. Headline. Who, so who do we think the other four are? Obviously, LeBron. I don't. Did Michael Jordan get 7000 assists? Probably. Oscar Robertson, LeBron, and, and Russ. Russell Westbrook. Yeah. Yeah. Just like that. I guess James Harden is uh, probably better than Scottie Pippen or Dwayne Wade all time. But you know who's not that high up all time? He is not. <laughs> Isaiah Thomas, who has uh, oh. been signed for the rest of the season after getting signed to a second 10 day after he was cut from the first. So when we were last covering the story, I was like, Oh, he made the comeback. He finally did it, but he got cut. He actually got signed again since then. And has now been signed a third time with the Suns. Uh, does this give the Suns a better chance at winning a championship this season? If this is not the alarm bells fucking going off in Phoenix, then I don't know what is that they're like, Holy shit. Isaiah Thomas. Wow. Impressed yeah. the fuck. Huh? Who cares? I said it the last time we brought him up. I like Isaiah Thomas. I like his story. I like, not that I like everything that he's been through, but it's a very endearing story, and he's a very easy guy to roof over. What the fuck? This isn't make a wish. I don't care. He's not going to play, and he's not going to do anything. 
Yeah, yeah. whatever the opposite of yeah. like a human victory cigar is, I feel like that's this Isaiah Thomas signing. It's like waving the white flag of like, yeah, we're not anything. Next story is that Boston becomes the first ever franchise to have four different players win player of the week in a single season. This does not include the Atlanta Hawks, who famously had uh, their whole starting lineup win player of the week. Maybe it was player of the month. I don't really remember, but all five of those guys at one point. I think it was player of the month, actually. All right. So if it's player of the month, I, I reckon that doesn't. Go, but that's know, also but that's, the week awards, that's also but. not the same thing of having four different players winning you know if four different players one player of the month that'd be truly insane but like do, do you think jason tatum would have more success with uh that atlanta core or this core <laughs> uh this core <laughs> is better than that atlanta one for sure that's a fun question but i think it is boston can that we is, do a no one has ever definitely boston that is a what if that opinion. no one has ever pondered <laughs> <laughs> as a as a quick little B story here, Rudy, what we don't need to derail too much here. Can I get a quick thought from everybody here on the Drew Holiday four year, hundred thirty five million dollar extension? Hey, a lot of money, to... but they don't have a choice. It's kind right. of jump, jump in the gun, you know. I've seen well, some people say that. Uh, hey, get get out of here, hoops hype. I won't continue much, much without disabling. Uh, he got four years, one hundred and thirty five million dollars. I imagine all that's not guaranteed. There's no way. Last year's a player option. Jason Tatum's extension is coming up. That's They've it? got uh, Jalen Brown signed to a three hundred million dollar year. They're going to be into the tax for a yeah, long like, time. I feel like he's pretty old to be making fucking like I guess thirty four million a year is not really Chris that Paul great money. anymore. Well, <laughs> Chris Paul's money he's, is he's definitely producing more than Chris. That's for sure. But shit, Drew Hall has been one of the most instrumental players. Uh, in the Boston Celtics success this season, though, I think I mean, he really been. undervalued him leaving Milwaukee, like I said last week. But uh, four years, 135 million is a uh, pretty steep. Pretty well, steep. these days, 37 I, on the last I, year of his contract, yeah, it's so just it's because of his year. age. The amount of money per year isn't that crazy because these days, like being as good as Drew Holiday is, you'll get 35 mil because it's not a max contract anymore. 35 mil is like pretty damn good starter money. That's uh, the same thing when people were talking about OG's hypothetical contract extension, like what he was expecting, and it was like thirty-four million dollars a year. It's like, yeah, that's what great, like S-tier role player, not quite a star, but right below that level guys get now. If we had to quantify it, it would be like ten years ago, a guy getting eighteen million a year. It's yeah. just gone up. It's just yeah. gone up. Yeah. And it's only going to go up more. And the thing is, like, I think there was even some post that I saw about like the percentage like what percentage OG would make getting that 35 mil. And it's like, that's like the equivalent of him making like 18, like 10 years ago, not even. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yesterday's price is not today's price. Uh, next we got Nemiah Kato. Yeah, wait, wait, can I say this? I'd be jealous as fuck. If I was like a 1970s NBA player, I would be pissed off all the time <laughs> about how much money they make now. Uh, Namayesh Keita signed with Boston as well. I believe it's a multi-year deal, but they did not disclose the details yet. Going from a non-guaranteed to being a lock as the 15th man for Boston. What do you think is going to have more impact on this uh, postseason, Namayesh Keita or Drew Holiday? <laughs> what kind of question <laughs> is that? Uh, no, it's just a silly one, but he's pretty good. In the limited Keita minutes I've seen, he's he's been a... A solid big man, definitely a worthwhile pickup to be that fifteenth man. Uh, you know, maybe not worthy of like a whole video breakdown of his game, but in the limited run he's gotten, he's been pretty good. <laughs> Don't threaten Alex, Alex with a good time. Oh, yeah, <laughs> honestly, uh, careful what you wish for there, Rudy. Yeah, that shit's uh, gonna get two thousand views. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna get less views than the Tyrese Maxey video. <laughs> Uh, we also have a judge ruling in John Morant's favor in uh, self defense regarding him uh, punching that teenager on <laughs> on his on his uh, on his basketball court in his house. Uh, just want to say I told you so to everyone who ever told me I'm wrong about that. You know, I was telling you about this the other day when you told me that I was like, I don't know why people are acting like a 17 year old can't be threatening. 
Yeah, it's and, also and not like John Morant a, is a seven footer. You know, he's not Shaq. He's he's right. like one of the, I was, the smallest framed NBA players out there. I had a grown man's body when I was eleven, so I sure as shit had one when I was seventeen. Yeah, I think there's got to be a conversation that's had at some point about like. If you're 15, I can punch you in the fucking face. I don't like. I don't. I don't care that you're not an adult. <laughs> That's a take. Like, That's. I, I think take. if you are adult sized and you're being aggressive, I can do whatever I want to you. No, I don't care, <laughs> dude. I, I think the official take. position of this podcast is that takes. no one should ever feel any I'm pain just saying, like, under if, any circumstances. If, like for a any reason, fifteen-year-old swings on me. I'm gonna try not to swing back, but like I, that no, is a, that is a legitimate a threat. <laughs> if a 15 year old swings, his ass is asleep. He's snoring. Are you kidding me? I don't know if you guys have hooped with like Zoomers before. I Dog, know. I don't care how old you are. That's it's over. Shut the fuck up. I will fight you. Shut up. 15 years old and up can get it. Pause. No, no diddy. Not, I wouldn't fight anybody <laughs> no unless diddy. provoked before. <laughs> <laughs> I guess being teased is provoking, but damn. I like it's not my fault that you're a shithead kid and you can use that as a vehicle to be an asshole. Fuck that. No. Okay. <laughs> What's someone, next, Rudy? Someone in the chat just said clip that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo avoided an ACL injury and is merely going to be out for the rest of the regular season with a calf strain, even though he went down and was uh, holding his Achilles. It is just a calf strain. God, that would have been brutal. Truly would have been brutal. Uh, does this shake your belief in the Bucks, or do I need to remind you that last time, uh, or at least not last time, but the time before Giannis had an injury going into the playoffs, he came back. Carry them to a championship. It didn't Dog. happen in 2023, yeah, yeah. but it, you know, he did it in yeah. 2021. It wasn't even before that. Rudy, he hyperextended his knee and then put up a fucking fifth and was back in the finals like three days later and put up 50 in a closeout game. Like this guy is fucking Superman. Yeah. So, like he's had a history of looking like shit's fucked and it was actually just a minor inconvenience. Tis but a injury, flesh wound. <laughs> it looked like it could have been really bad. And I got to uh -huh. say, is there a less reassuring coach in the fucking NBA than Doc Rivers? They're like, hey, is he all right? And he's like, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> he's like, I'm praying to God that he's okay, yeah. but I have no idea. The fuck Doc Rivers, if anything, is honest about what's going on in his head. <laughs> and it's usually to a fault. And I guess that's just to get another example. Sometimes it's just really fucking funny. And like now, mm -hmm. now knowing that Giannis is fine, it's funny. He's like, it's I don't funny. know, shit could be fucked. Yeah. <laughs> but in the moment, you're like, dude, what the hell? <laughs> yeah I, I thought you for some reason in my head mike budenholzer was still coaching the bucks so you're like is there a least reassuring coach than mike budenholzer because he always has that like gambler who just lost the house look on his face <laughs> it's That's like his if, signature right if the camera just cuts to mike budenholzer with that expression on his face after Giannis has heard i'm like all right it's over i want to see like a milwaukee artist original painting where it's like a ripoff of i think it's the van gogh scream but it's just mike budenholzer that mm. that would be appropriate someone funny. at gpt yeah. make that for I'm, me. <laughs> I'm just uh yeah, I, I don't feel very good about Milwaukee in general. That's not doing anything to help it because, like, I don't know. At that point, your chemistry is fine. You're probably going to be sitting guys a bunch anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. But it's definitely not a positive. Uh, can I get – I have two really hot takes about playoff teams this year, one for each conference. Uh, and I, I guess it's not – this one doesn't really apply because it's not going to happen. But I do feel like if the Knicks were fully healthy in the playoffs – they would be a better playoff team than the Bucks, And I also feel like if uh, Dante DiVincenzo continues this heater and you just have him do that in the playoffs and then Julius Randle factor is gone, you just have OG as your four, you play a little bit smaller because you can get away with that with Josh Hart. I... I think that team could also theoretically be just as good as the Knicks would be otherwise with Randall. That's highly contingent on if Julius Randall would be good, like a, a good, like if regular season Randall production trans, like transferred, then I would say that's a preferable option. But if he was just going to shit the bed or at least be pretty damn disappointing again, I could see a world where this version of the Knicks is actually better. I like it. Here's my question. Alex, go ahead. If you got a take, go ahead. No. Oh, you look like you're about to say something. Okay, I'll just I'll take the microphone back. My yeah, question it, about, about the Knicks is this. 
is if they make it to how far do they have to make it without Julius Randle before Leon Rose starts asking questions. And he's like, <laughs> this is a movable contract and we could swap this for somebody. I don't know who it is, but we could swap it for somebody. How far do they have to make it? Is it the second round? Is it the Eastern Conference Finals? I think if they the go to the finals, finals, his ass is gone. He's got to be out of there. I think either Conference Finals or a super competitive matchup in round two versus a team they really don't have much business hanging with. If they pull that off, I think there would be at least conversations. And that's the thing is, where? Like who's yeah, he's one of those players that's really hard to create a fit for them. And I I want to highlight specifically Dante DiVincenzo. So we went to the Knicks Bulls game and he was just like bucket after bucket after bucket in the shoot around. And like obviously players are gonna make a lot of shots in the shoot around, but it was like he was not missing and he had a guy giving him contests. You know, it was light contests because it's shoot around, but it was still not nothing. And he'd take him from deep. He'd take him like running off of the corner. And like immediately I was like, this guy's going off. He is just locked in. I think he hit one three pointer the entire game. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, bad. But after that, he had like a 30 piece the game after. So I was a little upset. Like, damn, you had to, you couldn't, you couldn't have done that that day. It was a back to back, to be fair. But straight up, like, he's averaging 20 points per game in his last 30 plus. Like, he is pretty fucking good. And like, I do feel like, them having that and just being an off ball player, someone who doesn't disrupt the flow of an offense. Otherwise, like Randall has a tendency to doesn't really take bad shots. I feel like that could be a better substitute just from a basketball fit perspective. Yes, they can beat the magic. They have yes. the best player in the series by a country mile. Oh, strike your bingo card for country mile on your uh, rusty buckets. Mm. card. Uh, next, we got Mark Lore and Alex Rodriguez being reportedly planning to uh, reduce the Wolves' salary cap burden to you get below the luxury tax should they have had their uh, acquisition of the Timberwolves go through. Uh, personally, I think this is just propaganda <laughs> to support the current ownership. Uh, but if this is true, uh, man, it sure is funny to think that they were just planning to trade Cat immediately. Like, they were just... Licking their chops, going, "Oh man, how can we get this guy off our books?" So, I don't know. I, I don't know why everyone like lost their. Because here's the thing: there's two possibilities. Either it was propaganda by Glenn Taylor trying to make uh, the two new guys look bad, or it wasn't propaganda and it's actually true. In which case, did we all just collectively forget that like it's a bad thing to be a luxury tax team? to be over the luxury tax apron. Like we all talked about when the new CBA was signed, we were all like, Hey, look at how punishing it is to be a luxury tax team. There's a lot of restrictions placed on what you can do in your flexibility as a team to be able to improve. It may not be a good thing to be a luxury tax team. It's almost like when they made the new CBA, that was the intent that it wasn't easy for teams to just spend and spend and spend and still be able to get better. But now this report comes out and everyone's like, oh, oh, you're telling me they don't want to be a they don't want to be a luxury tax team. How dare they? How dare they? They're going to buy the Timberwolves. They better be ready to pay every single bill that comes through the door. They better be they better be ready to pay 40 million to Cat, Gobert, Anthony Edwards, Mike Conley, Nas Reed, Kyle Anderson, Dacian Nix, all of them up and down the roster better be ready to shell out for every single one. It's like, why would you want to do that? You can't get better. If you're like you're you're literally they made it to where you're yeah. locked into your core if you're a luxury tax team. So why all of a sudden are we mad at potential new owners looking at a team and being like, we should probably maintain some level of flexibility, right? Yeah, that seems like a pretty good idea. And now we're all like, oh, they're villains for it. What? I think it's I think the logic that they're following is from what the luxury tax was in the past where it really wasn't that severe. It's like if you have the money, pay it, which like even though Minnesota has been more successful lately, I don't know that they necessarily do not to a super high extent. And like generally you don't want to be in the luxury tax unless you're really sure you've got a contending team. And maybe they do feel that way, but they've got good enough reason to, I'd say. Um, but yeah, the, like the logic used to be like you should go in the luxury tax because it's worth it in that pursuit of a title. And I believed that logic in the past, but that was when the worst 
scenario of the luxury taxes, you just have to pay a little bit more money. Now there's like actually severe consequences that come along with it. And like, maybe I'm okay with those severe consequences if I'm, you know, the 2017 Golden State Warriors, but like a team that could be a contender, but is definitely not like a lock. Definitely not doing that with the new CBA. Yeah, and and and, it, and listen, if the Timberwolves go and win a chance, if they make it to the conference finals this year, you better be ready to pay that luxury tax dollar and keep everyone around and lock into that core because that team has proven they're contenders. And then you just handle any issue that arises after that. But like, let's see what they do first and then talk about the luxury tax thing. It's like, why would you lock yourself into uh, something without seeing what it's like at its full potential first? Like that just seems very premature and irresponsible, but I agree with Rudy. It just sounds like propaganda from Glenn Taylor to try and make, uh, Lauren Rodriguez look bad. Yeah, it's like on the one hand, sure, maybe A Rod did have some liquidity issues and it took a little bit longer for them to reach their agreement. And yeah, maybe they did want to, you know, like let's say like all these things are true. I don't think it would have really downgraded the level of ownership in Minnesota. I don't think Glenn Taylor has a sparkling reputation. The dude was paying oh. guys under the table and like ruined their franchise forever from it or whatever, you know, he uh, didn't build a good team around or didn't have his guys build a good team around KG. However you want to fucking frame shit going from Glenn Taylor to almost anybody else would have been minimum a lateral move. <laughs> it's hard to get worse. Yeah. And so for this to not the result in the in the transfer of ownership is a, a big L for Minnesota fans everywhere. I think, I think. Here's my question on the whole thing. If I'm interested in purchasing a franchise and I have the, I have the, uh, what do you want? I, I, I want to buy it in cash, okay? And I go to do the sale, but they do some extensive background checks and they find out that I have a 320 credit score. Are they going to, but I have the cash. I'm good for the cash. Do you think that a credit score, if A Rod's credit is bad, do you think they would be like, no, you can't have this fucking? You have the money. We see that you're good for the money, but your credit score sucks, so we can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I think you need at least a credit about? score of 800 to buy the Clinton to buy an NBA team. I think. I think that's. Are you guys starter. disillusioned by the credit system, or I'm confused what the what the confusion here is? <laughs> if I just didn't a, know, I don't know how like. Uh, is credit okay. score like involved in the purchase of an NBA? That's what I'm asking. That's what I'm asking. Is it? I don't know. Because I, I feel like buy if house... you're, I feel like if you're in the conversation for purchasing an NBA team, there's no doubt about what your credit score is. Crypto billionaires <laughs> is my mm. counterpoint. Matt Ishbia, he's not a crypto billionaire, but is my counter. Eventually, that fucker is going to come along, where like his credit sucks, but he just has a shit ton of money. You know, he's like a he's like a frequent. Rudy, what's the next thing? <laughs> uh, the next thing is a uh, follow-up on another story we've covered in the past uh those typos on the kobe bryant statue that was recently unveiled have been corrected now so i just wanted to follow up and give the people it was keeping me up at night so i'm yeah. glad to hear that was yeah, the bro. first thing i asked myself this morning when i woke up was i wonder if they fixed the typos on the kobe bryant statue <laughs> you get the little rise and grind notification and then you have a reminder who says check for corrected typos on the kobe jose Cal jose calderon has been fucking vindicated right and then uh finally we got joel Embiid, uh quote unquote on the toxic mvp conversation he's happy he's not in it that's uh his words <laughs> so all right yeah uh, sure dude, Dog, he was so gonna win full of shit. it was gonna be a landslide if he was healthy it wouldn't have even been close he would have won he's pissed he's molding right now he's shitting screaming and sliding down the fucking wall that he's not in this conversation don't lie to us Joel is just coping huh <laughs> yes <laughs> he's pissed you should have Joel and beat on the coping hour be a perfect guest I, I think, think yeah, he get he's he's internet savvy. He's like a good he's like a C tier B tier shit poster. So I think he kind of gets it. Yeah, we're just two years away from two years away on that. You know, I think it's in the pipeline. The Bruno Caboclo of podcasts, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that uh leads me to transition into the topic I really want to talk about in this podcast is a, uh, I want to do my own contribution to the toxic MVP conversation uh, because right now I think that it should be Luka Doncic's trophy and 
it's kind of hard for me to imagine myself believing anything else. I know it's been Jokic, Jokic, Jokic all year, ever since Embiid went down. But with this stretch of basketball from the Mavericks, I think it's worthy of uh, throwing Luka's hat into the MVP conversation in a very serious way, not just in a runner-up capacity. Uh, are, are you guys all aware of like the crazy statistical anomalies and whatnot regarding Luca? Because like he's truly been an outlier performer. He's like brother. Or sixteen. Go, go back. Do we, go do back. we, do we have Reverse to cover that. this every time? Every that. time you say the word, <laughs> yeah. do we got to do this? You I'm, not gonna let it, I'm not going to let do it again. Oh, we do have to do it. I, I'm not letting it slide. And one of these days, I'm going to get you guys with um, all, all, all my little isms that I try to get over your head. It started with the Zach Levine. You just won't let me do oh, it. And then God. it progressed to outlier. Uh, and what can I say? Out, outlier. <laughs> right, right. Outlier. I, I'm an outlier, frankly. That's, that's what's happening right here. So I'm caught in my lies of trying to bamboozle you guys with my nonsense language. But the Mavericks, since the last time they lost consecutive games, they're 16 and 2. One of those games with, was without Luka. So they've only lost one game with Luka in the lineup out of their last. Uh, 17, 16, uh, something like that. Luke is averaging a 31 point triple double basically on 45, 40, 80 splits, basically. And they officially crossed 50 wins was recently with just two games left in the season. And they're one game back from the Clippers, so they could theoretically get home court should the Clippers lose out and the Mavericks win out. Uh, but I, I think. Luka deserves more MVP recognition than Jokic here because the West is very competitive, but no one saw this stretch of winning coming from them. And I think no matter how you want to argue about it, it's like the numbers are better. The carry job is better. The whole shit that we covered on that damn main channel video, like a month and a half ago, Jacob, like all that shit to me now favors Luka. This is all stuff that kind of got left on. I, I do want to keep putting this out there, despite the fact that I am of course a big fan and proponent of Luka. I don't the the no help thing is not f that true really like he's got the best second option out of like every MVP candidate essentially at least in terms of regular season maybe you think Jamal Murray is better than Kyrie Irving in the postseason it's probably true uh but you know He's got a good core of role players as well. Really, the biggest thing that he's carrying against is fucking Jason Kidd. That's the yep. that's what I have in my notes. That's the like, factor. Because they like, must have like good supporting cast, and I don't think we need to penalize someone that much for being in a decently constructed roster. But I'm not really saying the, penalize him, but I'm also not just going with a hardcore carry argument. Like he's not just straight up carrying. He puts up crazy numbers because he puts up crazy numbers. Uh, but it's not because he's like willing them to every single win that they get necessarily. I've seen some like thumbnail on my YouTube homepage recently. Uh, I didn't click through the video. I should probably go find it and watch it just for science. Uh, but it said something like why Luca's numbers don't match his impact or something like oh, that. Or are you talking about the, the thinking basketball, thinking basketball video? video? I yeah, was like, yeah. that doesn't make sense to me because they do. I'm pretty sure they do. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there is a strong correlation that the Mavericks are way better when Luca's on the floor by like a comical margin. Even yeah. now when Kyrie is on the floor when he's off, it's still by a very wide margin they're better with Luca on the floor. But I think like if you're gonna take like credit away from Luca's MVP case because of his like quality of a second option, you can algebraically apply that to like Jokic's case. You know, it's the same thing. I'm not taking Jamal it Murray away. Like, I'm just Jamal not away. giving him what you're giving him. That's a different thing. I'm not knocking him for having Kyrie, but I'm also not calling him like a saying he's doing a remarkable carry job when he has Kyrie Irving and the good role players. That's a solid NBA core. It's not like he's the. It's not like this is the 2001 Sixers or the 2017 OKC Thunder. I'm just saying they've lost two games in the past month, and one of them was without Luca. So like, the the fact that they're this good because he's doing this good. Like without Luca, if he wasn't there, they would be 500 max. You know, sure, but, but a lot of a lot of to 500 a lot of supporting month. cast without their superstar would be 500. A lot of them would. That's that's fine. It's a solid supporting cast. A solid supporting cast isn't a playoff team in the Western Conference. No shit. But 
Luca is Luca. I'm just saying it's it's not a carry job because he has a superstar level impact. You could make that argument for fucking everybody. I just think you could people will think about like Jokic's case in terms of like being the team being hyper dependent on him and like inflating this sense of value from that purpose. But you could just apply everything you said about Jokic to Luca. And to me, like the statistical discrepancy between the two is like one is a point guard and one is a center. And like besides uh, that, I say pretty often they're basically the same player, but just the guard version and the center version. I'll be honest. I, I think in, I personally don't care too much about who wins MVP, but I'm going to say this about like the whole whose team is worse without the star player. I feel like the Nuggets, like it's not even a, like an argument. They are like categorically, and the numbers back this up. They're well, like way worse without Jokic compared to the Mavericks mm-hmm. without Luka. I will say that is partially to blame with the construction of the roster being like it's it's like the car without the engine. You well, know? I mean, yeah, but we're talking about valuable. And we're talking about which engine's more important to the well. Here, here how fast the car goes. Here's here's how the well thing. the car here's, runs. Here's I'm not, and I'm not saying it. Jokic is uh-huh. is my pick for MVP. Right. I'm not saying Luca is. I just I I, I feel like if you're talking about which team, if strictly value, if we're talking about strictly value, and I know that's not necessarily what the MVP award is always about. Mm-hmm the whole which team is worse without who uh, it's you it's going to be Jokic every time because well, that's just how it is I, that is true to an extent but i also feel like in terms of which set of help is better when that player is actually playing which is ultimately what we care about because we're talking about how they're playing so them well, playing you, is the ideal picture that's like, what i was that's what i was saying where that's not the the whole mvp discussion is not just about like uh-huh strict on off value because if right. it was it would be some random player who has really weird like lineups that they run with and for some reason they have like a plus five thousand mm-hmm. x amount of minutes but like i'm well, just I'm saying, saying... Well, I, strictly <laughs> in regards to the value thing of like on off that's all i was getting at i'm saying i don't think it's the fairest comparison because of the way the roster is constructed and it's specifically like I think when both players are playing, Jokic has better help. But, you know, which team's better without the other? The Mavericks would be better. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Got you. They have a we were higher, never disagree. A higher ceiling a and a lowing <laughs> and a lower floor. So yeah. It's typically we save super chats for the end of the podcast these days, but this guy's comment was a uh, Ten whole dollars and very relevant to our exact conversation right now, so I felt the need to bring it up. Uh, Partha says that the carry job isn't about no help; it's injuries. We had thirty-five starting lineups before January, and our starters missed ninety combined games. Luca averaged a thirty-seven point triple double in that span and kept them above five hundred. And I just think that these sort of like milestones from Luca are sort of being overshadowed by the lack of you know push for him for some okay, reason it feels the like there's time, like a at, fatigue you at know at the same time is our the reason we are getting luca higher and higher in these conversations not because of how they've been playing recently that's the main crux of the argument is like they can't stop winning now isn't that right. literally what the title is? The yeah, Mavericks like they had a rough season. Winning? They've had a rough season, and now their health and everything else is finally coming right. together he, here at the end of the his, season, his and they're carry, capitalizing. They're looking but amazing. The suggestion is that he's carrying them to this winning, when in reality all he was carrying them to before this started was keeping their head barely above water. In one of the most competitive Western conferences sure, of all time. fine. But we don't get. I, I I just am not giving him an MVP for that reason. I think Lucas should be the MVP. I just don't agree with your arguments for it at all. He could just be the MVP because his team's good and his numbers are fucking ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I, that that's what that's what <laughs> like everyone's trying to make it some like crazy thing. I think another issue is that we're extrapolating post All Star break performance from the Mavericks out to the course of the entire season Mm -hmm. when the reality is that prior to the all-star break the Mavericks were not as good as they are now it's like them becoming this good was like a relatively recent thing they were good don't get me wrong before Mm -hmm. the all-star break they were good they're probably gonna be a playoff team 
but now they're like, oh, they are they might be in that upper tier of contender. So it's mm-hmm. like, I, I'm not necessarily trying to discredit the success that they've had, but I am like, let's let's talk about where they're at now is not where they've been the entire season. Mm-hmm. It's been a progressive thing. And I think it's fine to be like, yeah, what Luke is doing is insane. And that's why he's the MVP. We don't need to do like the whole like, oh, over the last month, after the last two months, the Mavericks are doing this. And it's like, that's the Mavericks as a whole. Like this team has changed drastically over the past couple of months. Like Luke has been doing this the whole season. So let's talk about what Luke is doing and worry less about the team, you know? If, in the MVP conversation, obviously yeah, talking it's about just like the winning post-season. factor, yeah. it will always be relevant to the MVP to some degree. As unfair as it can be, a little bit to like, you know, what else more can he fucking do? Type shit. But yeah. and crossing we keep that about... fifty win threshold is just sexy. You know, it's a nice round number. It's, it's an attractive reason to consider the MVP. Is that he got his team to fifty games? Obviously, the rest of the team did too, but. He's the guy on it's that. It's wild team. how uncommon like 50 win seasons are becoming, especially just with the Western Conference being the way that it is. It's like you get th- you get three of them like tops. And then uh similar to our last comment, the dollar amount is just too high for me to ignore in the I didn't watch immediate. I didn't watch the video. I just uh, was reacting to the title and thumbnail. Uh, Noel's comment says, if you watch the Thinking Basketball video, the Mavs actually don't drop off at all when he goes to the bench because of how good Kyrie is. Same thing when Harden and CP played together. I appreciate the synopsis, Noel. That uh, we'll would check, we'll surprise check me, especially if that was the number for the entire season. That yeah. that would shock me. Lately, sure. Uh, I just, I just see if that was the case, I think the Mavericks would have been much better earlier on in the season. Yeah. Well, it is game time, fellas. We have entered the stage of the program where I pit you guys against each other. Uh, Hope you guys are ready for a little bit of competition. Uh, But today it's going to be a similar game to what we had last week where I got some real quotes and I got some fake quotes now with the scoreboard on screen. Uh, So I think the rules are relatively self-explanatory. Without any further ado, fellas, are you ready? We yep. spent 10 minutes talking about the MVP. I didn't even get to give my fucking take. Let's start the game, though. No, by all means, get your <laughs> no, take No, no, I want to start this with the game. Let's start the fucking game. Let's do it. Let's do this. I, I didn't fun. know you had something locked up and locked locked and loaded and ready to I go. I was just letting the boys fight amongst themselves, and I was waiting for the... No, no. Go back to the other <laughs> place. <laughs> I don't want to get right back to. Take. We're right back Check to Check out pre-game. the coping hour tomorrow morning. Let's do the fucking segment. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, all right, let me click the right buttons again. It was just two clicks to get it back, but it was several to, to get it back again. Uh, we got Dante G. Vincenzo telling a Bulls fan to shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, that was at the game we were at. <laughs> okay, and so think, it's real. It's a real quote. Yeah, there. I think that Nick literally pointed that out. It was like, it might have been you. There was like some Knicks fan or some Bulls fan is talking shit to Dante and like That's Dante right. turned around. That did no, happen. that was it. And the guy, the shithead took a video of it and posted it like he wasn't getting owned. <laughs> he was just yelling a bunch of stupid shit to him. He just <laughs> turns around real quick. Shut the fuck up, and then turns yeah. back and do like goes to spot up. I for that did happen though. That's yeah. a good good. I would have forgotten about that. That definitely did happen. Yeah. This question feels rigged against me. Uh, sounds like you're all it's real. Yeah, you're all correct. It is real. Dante DiVincenzo did tell a fan to uh, shut the fuck up. Oh, that's the wrong color. There we go. <laughs> Green. It's just it's so funny. The, the the bot the way his body moved. He like did a quick spin, like a quick one eighty. Shut the fuck up and then 180 back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, Mikhail Bridges on a 4.8 magnitude earthquake in the northeast. I felt that for sure. What the fuck was that about? There's a real or fake quote, fellas. Ooh, this is Rudy. This is your best one since we started. Yeah, this doing is this definitely last your week. best one. Um, this is really good. <laughs> this is where the match is won or lost. Oh. Is on is on one like this. I'm gonna say we only have five rounds total, so be sure to play your game theory. However, you know. He's a pretty naturally funny guy. I think without trying, like saying something like this, maybe it is, it reads better as a quote. If he just said it, he probably just kind of said it and probably wouldn't be that funny, but it reads really well as a quote. Um, I believe they asked him about it. I'm going to say this is real. 
but it nah, it's real. It's real. I think the question's real, but the quote's fake. So I'm going to say it's fake. I feel like the quote is real, but what it's in response to is not what it was actually in response to. Wow, we got all three ends Ooh. of the spectrum. So I, I think he said this, but I, I'm questioning whether or not the setup for it is what the setup is. So I'm okay. going to say real. The quote itself is real. Okay, so we got two reels on the bottom and a fake on top from you, Jacob. Mm -hmm. It is real. Fuck yes. is <laughs> All right, let me just adjust the scoreboard. But yeah, that's a 100%. A you should have made that one fake. Quote. You could have gotten away with that so easily. Oh, yeah, no, I know. But that's the name of the game. You know, got to mix it up. That's so. why I thought it was fake, because I was like, that's such an easy one to alter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next, we got Anthony Davis, quote unquote. We're very confident we can win the championship. This I'm feels like fall. one where we're gonna be, where you're gonna be like, he actually said we're not very confident we can win the championship. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can't, uh, I can't give anything away. I just, well, I yes, this. yes, I understand. <laughs> I didn't see this on Reddit, and if he actually said this, then NBA Circle Jerk would have, yeah gotten all over i don't think he said this yeah i feel like it would have seen people dunking on him on twitter yeah this is not fake. real this is fake all three of you guys locking in fake yeah fake it is fake wow <laughs> oh, it, oh good so good okay wow okay nice yeah, no you're you're all correct the real quote is we're very confident in our ball club that's uh, an uh, interesting choice of words but you know i i'd feel like you guys wouldn't predict me to insert ball club as like a fake <laughs> word in a quote, you know, that just doesn't mm -hmm. quite sound like it's my game. Uh, let me adjust the score now. Uh, how confident are you guys in the Lakers though? Cause like, honestly in the West to me, they're like the most forgotten quote unquote contender uh, of the bunch to me. It's like that top five is much more interesting than the Lakers or the Warriors. It I think just, last year, oh, Nick, you go first. Got it. I think it just depends on what you're getting from like three through seven on the team. That's it. That's what it comes down to. I think in last year's Western Conference, it was like feasible for a, like a play in team to make a, a deep run just because of how the West was kind of laid out. And like, obviously, this Western Conference is way, 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 way better than last year's Western Conference. Like, good, so top heavy. And, you know, Maybe the Lakers make a deep run, but they're going to have a really, really hard time doing it because they're going to have to go through some heavy hitters. Like 450 win teams in the West, five. It's insane. All right, we got two more questions left. The current score is three in Alex's corner, three in Nick's corner, and Jacob falling behind with just two. So, uh, Jacob, you can still win, but these other guys got to be wrong. So mm -hmm. if you guys want to lock Jacob out, just align your answer with Jacob. That will prevent him from winning. Ooh, no or you can just points. throw me. Or you can just <laughs> throw me the win because you, I'm right. All right. This next one, Bojan Bogdanovich. Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray are the best duo in the league. Uh, extra points. Is he right? Yeah. <laughs> he is right. Uh, um. Yeah. I'm going to focus on if he actually said this or not. I f this, this should have been Giannis and Dame, but it's not. Rudy, just for clarification, whenever we do this game, it's always going to be quotes from the last time we did a show, right? Yep. Okay, so he wouldn't have said this. Like, Okay, so he would have said this within the last This is another one. I just feel like I would have seen something about We'll it. have the Knicks and Nuggets played each other in that span? No. No, the Knicks have been on a road trip. They played like the Bulls twice. They played the Bucks. They played. They play the Celtics yeah. tonight. Yeah, I feel like he'd have to be prompted in the locker room like after a Nuggets game. Yeah. Like, yeah. why would he say that otherwise? So yeah. I'm gonna go with false. I'm gonna you say false. Think Bojan Bogdanovic is maybe he's just a dick head. rider for no reason. He was like. <laughs> They yeah, were like, we asked you about your minutes tonight. The only thing I can think of is like, <laughs> I think the only thing that I could think of is like, if they asked them where Julius Randall and Jalen Brunson rank is the best, you know, best duos or whatever. Yeah. That's the only way I can imagine that coming up. I'm going to say, yeah. I'm going to say fake. Fakes across so, the board, Rudy. Fakes across the board. You're all correct. Yes. This was Bogdan Bogdanovich saying this. I was going to say, I thought <laughs> I remember seeing Bogdan say that. I was going to ask you. 
if Bogdan, if you got the name wrong, but I didn't want to give it away. It's not that I got it wrong. It's that it's a lie. <laughs> yeah. It fake feels one. really That's good to I just sniff out. Want to, I didn't want to give it away to anybody else. It feels really <laughs> good to sniff out the fake ones, man. That's the game, baby. The this imposter. One, possibly a little bit tricky. Doc Rivers oh, on God. record low free throw attempts versus the Celtics. Adam Silver is the happiest. Immediately Ooh. true. This is a really good fake one if it is fake. I don't think it is because we mentioned think- it at the Go ahead. Go ahead. We mentioned it at the top of the show that Doc has kind of been on this heater of just like yeah. saying shit. And I think in all of the memes about this game and, you know, only two free throws from both teams, I think an actual real life quote may have gotten lost in the fold. I, I believe that he said this. So we got one real yeah, from see, Nick. I'm, I think I'm going to say real. Here's the thing if you want to pull a wild card for faking a quote, no better wild card to pull than Doc Rivers. Like, <laughs> yeah, he'll yeah. say like, anything. Doc Rivers will say fucking anything. So I'm going to go with true, but I would not be surprised at all if you. Well, hold on, this Jacob. Just strategically... rule you out of winning. Yeah, strategically, okay. you want to say okay. false. I'm going to so say it's false. I'm going to okay. say it's false. Ooh, good point. Well, game coaching you. you up. I'm competing against you. Mm-hmm. Oh no, the whole background. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it is Fuck. true, Jacob. Now the I lose by a bigger margin. <laughs> <laughs> Nick and Alex are sharing the title today with the sweep, a clean five point sweep. You got every nice. single question correct. You guys are getting too good at this. Maybe I need to get better at designing these questions. Uh, I do have a little bit of extra information <laughs> on that quote. Uh, it's uh, all going. Milwaukee's Giannis Antetokounmpo shot only two free throws. The only two free throws of the game, making one in the Bucks 104 to 91 victory. Man, Adam Silver's the happiest, Bucks coach Doc Rivers said. An hour and 57 minute game time. My goodness, you can go to a game and still have dinner. Unbelievable. Rivers said he didn't realize there were so few free throws until after the game. I thought it was a physical game. And then they handed me the stat sheet and I told them, no, I need the full game. I thought it was the halftime stats. I didn't look at the minutes. And then I said, wow, two free throws for a basketball game. That's crazy. He literally went, wow, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> that's <laughs> pretty <laughs> funny, honestly. Doc Rivers, man. Coach of the year in terms of like media availability and, and Twitter memes. Like, I, I really think we should uh, have a little bit more respect for Doc Rivers. We should do this like season. a meme awards for like everyone, like the the the, the funniest coach. I don't know. That's actually a well, terrible idea. Well, I was idea. gonna do a I quick little. Immediately. I was gonna do a quick little. You know, you talk about Doc Rivers as he's a guy. You know, he'll just say anything. And I'm going through in the list in my head, and I'm trying to power rank the coaches. We can put Doc up there, but Missoula is up there too, where he could oh, say he's something crazy. Yeah, he's fucking nuts. <laughs> like he's actually crazy. What's can, in the water? I can, in Boston? I can throw you a throwback one fucking uh god damn it what's his name big fat head bulls player bulls bulls coach uh why Egghead? is why, why is his name escaping me right now jim boylan um, yeah uh, jim oh, boylan yeah. said crazy shit all the time <laughs> uh anyone want to take a go jim, at jim boylan this whole paragraph and uh, year olds do suicides in practice <laughs> yep. here let me like, yeah my... i'm not running coach I'm going to mute my mic and I'm going to see if I can do a Doc Rivers impression, okay? I have to, <laughs> I have to plug in my laptop charger. So, Oh no, Jacob's going to gonna die in here. We got I just thought of something. <laughs> try running the, the podcast. This is podcast. I can't do it. it. I just sound like I'm in the Godfather. I can't do it. Yeah. You got to get your like inner cookie monster. Yeah, I respect your boundary. Yeah, I no, the Cookie Monster would be Dikembe Mutombo. Not so yeah, but Doc Rivers, Rivers is like a more subdued Dikembe Mutombo. I could try to read it as as Kermit. I could do Kermit, but I can't. A little Pat Mahomes impression. Yeah, I could do like um, I could do the Taken speech as Kermit. <laughs> you compare him to Mutombo. It's like he's like Mutombo on Adderall. <laughs> I compared him to the Cookie Monster. Let's be clear here. I mean, they sound similar. Uh, Stavros uh, is kicking off our Q&A segment of the pod that we end every podcast with, minus uh, the exception here and there. 
uh, where Prepod, he said, take my money and make the time round. Who does that and why? This is because uh, I tend to set the podcast air times for like 3.35 or 3.55 was the listed time today. And frankly, it's for this reason is to aggravate. And, you know, uh, basically I'm gaming the algorithm by irritating you just a little bit and making it a little bit more memorable. Be like, oh, they're at 3.35. OK, I'll makes you remember it a little bit more than just 3.30. But next pod, we'll give you. An and hour. now you gave us money gave for us being late. Bucks. Good job. Hey, I'll be I honest. The five euros. I was I was reading this question and I was like, make the time round. Yeah. yeah. What on? Earth? I was so confused. I was like, what does this mean? And then early on in the podcast, we had Kiki three thousand say, "Why is Luca Luca skipped over in the MVP convo? People are considering him, I know, but not to actually win it. Will he ever get one at least once?" Yeah, there's no five shot five. he doesn't win at least one MVP. Yeah, I should it should start this season to me, but you know, apparently you guys don't agree with my reasoning. No, I what? I don't agree with no. I agree with you that he should be the MVP. I don't agree with your reasoning. My whole thing was like everyone's talking about the like a a very small amount of time for an entire season award, and I'm like, Luca has been doing this the whole season. I don't know why all of a sudden we're like post citing like only post all-star break stuff is like why he should win MVP. I'm like, guys, he's been doing this all year. That was my, that was my only thing. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. Valor response. It's just that, that winning recency bias. It's what uh, got my attention on it. Frankly, uh, sunken S Dex, I don't know, said should players and coaches have votes for the awards, not voting for teammates or yourself. They currently have votes in the all-star race, but not in the end of season awards. So should we expand that? Is that something? I, don't, I have mixed feelings about that. Cause like players can be fucking petty, man. Carmelo and like... Anthony would have five MVPs. <laughs> 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 If it was up to the players like the 80s or i mean like the uh before the 80s bam out of bio would be a fucking dpoy every single season because he's friends with like every player in the nba <laughs> i do not think that players and coaches need to infringe upon the territory that belongs to podcasters and bloggers we vote <laughs> on the yeah. awards not you fuckers you're very consistent on your stance you should run for office honestly between this and the anti-lebron podcast you are very consistent principles <laughs> i've been i've been workshop else i'll save it for a different time but what what's the next question rudy uh nathaniel thrush asked us speaking of the knicks brunson has been a top 10 player this season do we agree with this fellas is jalen brunson top 10 Dang unequivocally he's, he's probably anywhere from like 8 to 12 depending if he's not he's like literally as close as you can get. yeah if he's not he's 11 or 12 <laughs> but he is though but i do think he is he probably if i made a list right now he probably he's probably top 10. he's not just like a lock lock you know there's like 20 players in the nba who could be top 10 players right, that's, like that's even just a few reason. years ago you know it's a very stacked amount of talent that top 20 uh 20 through 10 is probably a i think completely uh, interchangeable list i think <laughs> yeah. jalen Brunson and Trey Young are like single-handedly keeping the small guard alive. Like no one else is doing it like them anymore. They're the only ones who are that good while not being any taller than like six one, six two. Poor poor John Moranch, just a little too tall to qualify for this conversation. Yeah, Griffin Vandersloot yeah. asked us a, a really question. wacky such a good question. One Ooh. hand with five fingers to spending unlimited amounts of liquid. What five do you pick? You know, I, I have the right answer. Come I don't on. have any confidence, so by all means, go off. Can it be like, it's liquid, as long as it's liquid, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You would never, ever need to buy food or water ever again if you just went like protein shake, water, Freaking, I don't know. What's your favorite? Coke Zero? I'll, I'll throw Coke Zero in there. Get a little caffeine, coffee. And I mean, you're not getting like solid food. IV. But you're Bam. not getting solid food. I live forever. Food, you're not getting solid food, though. You, you don't need to, you, still, you don't need you still, solid food. You still have to pay. What? <laughs> what do you mean? You, really, can, you can have an all-liquid diet. You just listed five drinks. <laughs> Protein drinks. That's what it is. Barely a drink. That, it's the questions about liquid, right? Yeah. You can just you're drink gonna... pure protein shakes and live. If you're you getting do, uh, all of your spoilant. necessary vitamins and like 
you could do like acids. soylent like you would be like missing carbs but uh, your body can learn also to i would just not want to live that fuel. way is the thing like i don't want to not buy groceries i'd rather buy groceries gasoline is a good one money, gasoline, gasoline is gasoline that's awesome. a good one okay i would place coke zero with gasoline oh, okay. they would get me if, if if I had gasoline that infinitely yeah. supplied out of my hand, they would get me. Yeah, you gotta. <laughs> I would not last You gotta keep long. that it's under society. wraps. <laughs> They're gonna J- milk you. JT said Alex would have the hardest turds ever if he only drank protein drinks. Uh, I do have incredibly hard turds. That's good to know. Uh, so, question. <laughs> Could I theoretically have something like dangerous come out of one of these fingers, but like it doesn't hurt me? Like, like gasoline? I, like, gasoline. If, no, no, no. <laughs> I was thinking if I just shot, like had a finger I could shoot molten lava out of, like that's a perfect self de- <laughs> self defense to have on you constantly. Jacob just wants superpowers. <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, look, <laughs> if, I just, air spray. Just... if I can just shoot, dispense lava out of one of my fingers, that's like my go to like defense mechanism. Just molten rock. <laughs> like someone tries to fucking rob me, and I just put my hand on his shoulder and start leaking lava. <laughs> it's over. I want for mercury, him. liquid freaking mercury to come out of my fingers. <laughs> Chili doesn't Give count, somebody right? Mercury Maybe poisoning. fucking lead. It would just be the sauce. Yeah. None of the none of the Liquefied chunks. Lead. No bean or beef. <laughs> I, I gotta be honest. Griffin here uh, actually emailed this to me about a week ago. <laughs> he needs this is a biting question. And he as soon an as I saw it come up, I was like, he knew there was no fucking shot. I was going to answer that question on the show because I read it and I was like, I think it was something to this effect. But it's like I don't I don't know. Um, uh, gasoline oil is a really good one. Oil is a really, really good Someone one. Someone in the chat said liquid gold. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's kind of like the, the lava question. I mean, you <laughs> could probably do literally just liquid any fucking valuable resource and just like let it sit. All right. What if it wasn't liquid a profit finger. mechanism? No prop. Like you try to go cash in your liquid finger gold and they're like, this is finger gold. This is no good. <laughs> <laughs> You're disrupting the economy. We can't take uh, it. You it's like counterfeit I, money. You think I wouldn't recognize that this is finger gold? I'm not an amateur, sir. I've been in this business a long time. <laughs> I've had so many schmucks come in here and try to give me finger gold. All right, so eliminate profit mechanisms. I think oh, like God. soylent slash protein shakes got to be up there. Yeah, we go protein uh, shake. Uh, Why? You, you prefer? You guys I, drink I, protein shakes. I drink protein, pro- protein shakes all the time. I drink one every day. Th- I had a soylent day, phase. I had a soylent phase. Okay, circa 2014, first year in college, I was like, "What if I didn't have to eat? This Kickstart program sure looks right for me." I would probably <laughs> go with fruit punch. For this whack dream. job saying Gosh. he wants to put food in the tap. Listen, yeah, I'm in. Coke <laughs> makes me sick, and too much lemonade will give you ulcers. So I'm going with fruit punch. <laughs> the visual of just sitting here, like you're thirsty, and you just start sucking your thumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So food, stimulating drink of choice, like coffee or freaking energy drink. I guess well, I don't have. I don't caffeine. Celsius. Work, so I'm good <laughs> yeah. on caffeine. Give me. Give me. Give of me course Celsius you'd have. Of course one. you'd have a Celsius finger. Yeah, gotta have a Celsius finger. I can't even really think of the other three. Bear, I think bear spray was fun. That you know, self defense isn't quite a prop profit mechanism. Yeah, you so could go mace. Counts. You could go mace. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> the other two, I guess, just one of them has to be I'll a dispense weapon. My bodily my fluids mystery. out of them. <laughs> It'd be like, all right, let me just cash out. I get I my pinky I, in the trash can. That's awful. That's <laughs> I'm, I'm anti that. Are you, that is, are you not that. okay with the current mechanisms you have to get rid of your fluids? Is is, is that just not working out for you? No, it's a condition. <laughs> Ooh, you can oh. wash your hands and pee at the same time. That's what I'm saying. Dilute that shit real nice, you know. Yeah, so I think I'm going molten lava, gasoline, water, fruit punch. And I don't know what my last one is. Nick's got something on his mind. I can see it. Yeah. I hate this fucking question. (laughs) (laughs) I love that you feel that way. And meanwhile, Alex was like, fuck yes. As soon as it popped up, I can't believe it. I love that this is generating a good, you know, Uh four to seven minutes out of you. I love it. I fucking (laughs) fundamentally hate this question. But go ahead. What else would you have, Jacob? I don't know what the last one would be. Uh, like if I—that's what pick... I wanted to say. Someone said, motherfuckers... <laughs> "I can't, I can't say that." Actually, I can't. Say motherfuckers that. talking about. 
guy said something about I'd say ketchup. You, you always got a writing utensil. When's the last time you wrote something? You guys are still writing shit? Dude, dude, I wrote something on paper recently for like the first time in months, and I was like, what the fuck is yeah. happening? Like, I don't, yeah, I, you're like, whoa. I don't know how to do this anymore. Months? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm excited to try breast milk. I'll put breast milk in one of my fingers. <laughs> <laughs>